Hello, greetings. This is Christina. And today I'm going to do a intuitive reading while adding my two cents to it. My intuitive sense and my two cents. It's a new format that I'm trying, mainly because I've had people in the past, when different things happen out in the world that are big stories that go on for a long time, a lot of them are tragic events, some of them are distractions, some of them are done on purpose, some of them are you know, just terrible things that have happened. Part of life, there's always something occurring. And though my profession is working as an intuitive and a metaphysical practitioner, I really don't do this so much in a public way. Uh, actually, I don't. I've done a little bit in the past. If you go back to my older videos, because I've been off of YouTube for quite a while, but. You know, I attempted and did some different shows and things like that, intuitive chats or, you know, people had a few questions. I never went very far with it. Um, there's a lot of different reasons. But at this time, I'm feeling or <laughs> the universe source is prompting me. So this is kind of an impromptu session, intuitive reading that I'm going to do because I usually we'll get something when there's some big news happening. I will get my own thing. I keep it to myself. I may talk to a couple of people, but then people start asking me questions. Well, what do you think happened? You know? And I was like, okay, let's see. Because I do tend to not all the time, but sometimes get some very clear senses, some very clear messages, sometimes dreams, sometimes a vision or an insight on this particular current affair that's taking place out there, this event. And I usually keep it to myself or chat with my friends about it. So today I am going to do um, one of the stories. There's many things that are happening right now in the political world and the entertainment world. So I'm going to go to the entertainment world right now. And there's a lot going on there as well. The one thing that I'm going to focus on is the tragic passing of the singer and former band member of One Direction, Liam Payne. Now, the interesting thing with this is that the day that it happened, I'm going to say that it was very quickly afterwards this uh, made news, especially where I am currently in Latin America. And they do tend, <laughs> they do tend here to get the news out very quickly and be quite explicit um, with what took place. So they will show pictures, you know, that you don't see a lot in Canada or the States or some other countries. You know, they have a little bit more sensibility um, to not post those. You know, because people get, get triggered. And also, you know, for the family, for other respect, for their family, their friends, etc. But here, not so much. <laughs> not just here, but like I say. And there might be other countries that do this too. I am not familiar with all the countries and how they deal with their news media and, you know, how they share things out there. In the Latin countries, they do tend to post pictures. Now... The interesting thing was that the picture I saw it immediately, which was posted by the, the, the gossip channel, uh, entertainment channel, TMZ in the States. And apparently there was another picture that was more explicit, but I did not see that. Um, and I wouldn't want to look at it anyways. But the one that I did see, to me, was very specifically taken <laughs> like what I mean is that it was 
done in a manner to portray more than likely a message to not the public first. Of course it's public, but not the public first. The pictures showed uh, two of his tattoos. I really didn't know because I really don't follow them. Uh, I really wasn't a fan in, in a sense or, you know, tuned into uh, very much of the group or the individuals. Have I heard of them? Yes. Have I seen a few things? Yes. But I really didn't tune into them. So I did not know what tattoos or even he, that he had quite a lot of tattoos on his body. So the two tattoos that were focused, very interesting, were was the clock and what I saw to be a scorpion. Quite a large size, I would say. Um, not huge, but, you know, a good size, obvious. In an interesting spot. Um, I did go do a little research as to his tattoo with a clock because that right away, like right away, my intuitive sense said, this is on purpose. This is to show the time that something was done. Now, I know he didn't, he didn't die at 5 to 12. Um, apparently, you know, it was 5.07 Argentinian time. Uh, so there's a 5 in there, but if you add 5 plus 7, it equals 12. So, you know, these certain nefarious ones out there, um, that we all know that exist, uh, well, most of us know, <laughs> and encounter in some ways. Um, they work a lot with numerology. They work a lot with symbolism. They work a lot with the planets, you know, times of things. Um, they understand in a lot of ways the esoteric realm, which is a realm I also work in, but they work with the dark aspects of it for self-purpose, self-serving. They're not for the whole, the benefit of all. They are for themselves. In any case, they work with a lot of symbolism. So this, this, cl this clicked right away for me. I just had this feeling, okay, uh, they are trying to put a message out there to whoever was possibly, I'm going to have to say allegedly, because I don't know fact. When you're working in the metaphysical realm, we don't, we don't have tangible proof until it presents itself in some way. Then you can say, oh, okay. But, so I'll say allegedly for everything, but they, my feeling was that this was a message to someone to say, it's done. It was accomplished. Uh, the time, uh, his time is over. The scorpion, which I actually really didn't tune into it much because I was really, really being taken into this clock. <laughs> well, it was just taking me into a place that um, something was organized, orchestrated. Today, I looked at the scorpion. Um, you know, a lot of people... Uh, see it as a bad thing. And it does have um, that meaning as well, depending on the circumstances. You know what I mean? Everything is light and dark. Uh, the dark is encompassed within the light. But the scorpion in this regard, you have to kind of look at the whole symbolism and how, the placement and the orchestration of all of this. And just happens that those two tattoos are the ones that a picture is being shown on TMZ, which, you know, I have my thoughts about them, um, you know, and whomever, I don't know, again, allegedly may be participating in this or having to follow orders. Um, of course, there was a lot of backlash, and they removed it. But, you know, once it's on the Internet, <laughs> I 
at least this internet, there's many levels of the internet. So there's the dark web. So I'm sure there's much darker and explicit pictures there. But on the surface web that most of the world is familiar with, um, you know, it's out there. Once you put something out there and someone takes a screenshot, that's the end of it. You know, uh, the, the, the internet would have to do, the companies uh, would have to do serious sponging. And they can do that. They can do that. But it's getting harder and harder these days to eliminate everything. Because it's really in cyberspace, you know. So getting back to the symbols, the scorpion also represents evil and death. And I just happens to be that his shirt, and I know he has a lot more tattoos because I have seen, there's, he has a lot of tattoos. His body's kind of half full, I think, on one side more so than the other side. Um, but these are the two that are just in your face. So they have a message. They have a message to whomever allegedly participated in his downfall. Yesterday evening, because it tends to be, um, for me anyways, even though I can do this work anytime, at nighttime it just feels a lot easier to connect. So I just spent a little time tuning in. The first thing I felt was, with it, Liam I mean, the first thing I felt was that he had not completely crossed yet. So in my uh, understanding and the knowledge and the work that I've done for 30 plus years, I, even longer, but I'll just say professionally, um, it takes six days or you have six days rather to cross once you leave your body to the other side. There is a process. There's a lot going on. It's going to be individual for each soul. Uh, but you do have that uh, time frame to cross before let's say the the <laughs> the door closes <laughs> per se and um and, and once that does you're kind of stuck in what we call ghost status there's spirit spirit status and ghost status and so if you don't cross over within that time frame and do your reviewing etc and you know you do decide on where you want to go after that what level you're not uh Asleep forever. <laughs> no, that's not it. We carry on. We're eternal beings. Soul lives on, carries on, takes on different forms, manifestations, lives. And if you don't do that, you're in the spirit status. Uh, sorry, you're in the, the ghost status, which means that a good part of you is still stuck on the earth. And I felt that he hadn't completely crossed. So I said, okay. Liam, have you crossed? The response I got was, no, not yet. I thought, okay, well, why not? You know, and it's understandable because a lot of people who do get stuck, especially when they have an abrupt or traumatic, brutal um, um, death and exit, uh, because we are multidimensional beings, there's many aspects to us. There's many subpersonalities. This is very metaphysical. Some people will understand this, some will not. But, you know, there may be parts of us that we're not ready to go. Do you know what I mean? So we're still hooked in. We're still attached to family, friends, even physical objects, your home, your money, etc. So, you know, those are some of the reasons why people don't cross. But I asked him, why? Why haven't you crossed yet? Fully crossed. Because I feel like there's a part of him that is like ready and is moving on, but another part is not. And I, I was trying to say to him, you know, from my understanding, because I, ha I do this work as well at times to help people to cross, souls to cross over. And I said, well, listen, if you cross over, you will be able to have a bigger picture, a wider view of things. You know, why are you stuck or are you stuck or what, what, what is the reason? And 
what I got was that he was trying to leave some evidence of what transpired for people to see. I said, okay, that makes sense. That's, that's interesting. Yet, still in my knowledge and understanding, I said, I think that you can do that much better when you fully cross. Because you're also going to have a whole different perspective of what took place when you were in your earth body, your physical body. So you're going to have, you'll be able to see it in a different light. And if you want to help, you can still help. You can do it uh, in different ways through people you love or people you trusted when you were on the earth. You can give them signs. <laughs> you can show them things. Those who are very receptive, perceptive, or, you know, have their own sensibilities, um, they can, you can communicate with them. So I, I felt like you could do a lot more. But anyways, it's not my decision. It's not up to me. It's, it's what he is choosing. So the next thing I said, or I asked really was, did you jump? Did you intentionally choose to die at this time? Was this your exit point? Your soul was like, okay, this is time for you to, to go. And this is the orchestration here. So I did not feel, and again, this is my intuitive sense. And let me explain a little bit very quickly the difference between intuitive and psychic reading. Sure, there's element of psychic ability within that. It's just that psychic is much more of the mind. It's vertical from the brain. Um, whereas intuitive is heart-based. And so what we do is we expand to the, you know, encompassing all that's encompassed. So within that is also psychic is also mind. <clears throat> there is, you know, communication, but intuitive, you just are opening up more to depending on your ability and how well you can do it is to the and how well you've honed your abilities um in a cosmic level so that's the difference there but i just kind of wanted to ask simple questions right now i may look at this a lot deeper later i maybe i'll get some insights or visions or whatever sometimes through dreams that's how i will get more clarity or information but i just wanted a little bit because there's the internet is crazy right now. Like when you have situations like this, it's crazy. People are, you know, sharing what they know. And then people take that and create their own story from it. It becomes very overwhelming. There's going to be fake stuff, real stuff. It gets all muddled together. And, um, yeah, it can be a mess. And we may never publicly know exactly, especially if it's where... I feel <laughs> things went. That will not be divulged, uh, not in its entirety. But there's many who have a sense, and, and you know, so that may be all you're going to get. So I'm just going to give you a couple of key points that I picked up on uh, from Liam. Did you jump? No, I did not. Was he trying to escape? In a way, there were other people involved. Um, some were there, some were not there. Um, okay, so this may go a different direction that some people are not familiar with, or whether you believe it or not, that's okay, because I've had clients with it, so... <laughs> um, was he on drugs first? Yes, he was. Uh, was it intentional? I'm not going to go into his mindset, his mental state right here. I'm not, I'm not, there's enough people out there doing that. And it's true. His life was difficult. Uh, it was blessed, but he was in an industry that is also very dark as well as fulfilling in certain ways and very detrimental in other ways. Um, and especially if you've been in it since you were a child, 
well, the things that you saw or, or were made to participate in or the control that was there, yeah, most cannot handle it. And many will end up having, you know, some type of mental, emotional, physical issues. So, yes, that all existed there. I feel, I feel, Liam, I can see, actually now that I'm talking, because I can feel a bit more of his presence, but he's still not completely crossed. So, because when someone's fully crossed, you can really feel them a lot stronger. And for me, it's much more clear. So here it's kind of like in and out. I feel that he was very psychic and intuitive himself. If I just look at numerology and I'm not an expert in that, I just like it. I like to tune into it, check it out at times. You know, he was a, he was, I'm a five. I believe he's also a five. Um, uh, or set, is it a seven? I'd have to go back and look, but, uh, either way, that's the flip side, seven and five or two sides of a coin. Um, seven is very deep into the spiritual. So I think of the day that he died, I'd have to really look actually, let's see. No, his birthday. He actually is a seven October. No, he's a five. Sorry. He was born on August 29th, 93. So he's a five. So he's the same as me. And so there's more practicality in that, but very deep uh, uh, spirituality, you know, whatever that may be, um, intuitive mysticism. But he also died October 16, 2024. That's a seven day. So it's a very spiritual day. And the reason I say some of this too is because those ones who may be participated in this orchestration of his early demise in one way um, will look at numerology, symbology, it's all part of them making a decision uh, in when things are going to take place and also how they can take place. They do follow a lot of similar patterns. If Many people have noticed this with a lot of different celebrities or public people who just seem to die from similar circumstance or strange circumstances, etc. So... They're not very creative in a lot of ways. Anyway, um, so this told me that he had a sense of sort of maybe uh, impending loom, like darkness coming. Something was going to happen. I feel like he did, and that may be why he started, and he was alone, because apparently his, his girlfriend uh, left earlier, or she did. Um, there's something behind that, which I don't really understand. I don't know her, never heard of her, just saw her recently in a video, very beautiful woman. Um, but she didn't feel that she was very aware of everything, but I cannot speak on someone's personal relationship and nobody really can, unless you were there or you are a participant in the relationship. But I just felt like she didn't really understand the depth of his issues and the depth of his pain and the depth of his ability to see beyond what most people can see. Um, so there's things that I don't think she knew about either. <laughs> I don't think he shared a lot of stuff with people. Um, also because he probably was told when he was younger never to share it. And then also because it was very, dark. Um, and you know, if you start talking about these things, especially if you're a public person, I don't know as many will know by what's happening with some other celebrity currently in the world. Um, so there's some issue that took place there. There's something, uh, that either he was going to expose because it was time um, and he may have made these kind of references in different ways before. I have no idea, um, if he did, it's just something that is coming up right now. Um, I do feel that there was a huge cover up. His death is a cover up, but there was other things. There was something else that was a huge cover up that he could not hold on to any longer. He, 
his psyche was traumatized from something. Probably more than one thing. Lots of secrets, things like this. Darkness that is not yet really fully being spoken about. It will in time. So he also, I oh, I also got that he overheard something. Now, this was something in his business or in the business world, the music world, whatever, uh, that he overheard. And possibly this has to do with um, uh, moving people around. <laughs> I'm not really sure because I see a lot of people talking in code here or changing the actual words. So I don't know if what we're allowed to say, what we're not allowed to say. So I'm going to say schmrackering. <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to learn the, the codes, code words for this. But um, I feel like he had knowledge of that and that he overheard something maybe not that long ago. In any case, he was holding these things, holding these things within his being. Now, again, my feeling is that there were people involved. I mean, he does give me that sense that there's other people involved, that there were um, orchestrators. There were people who had this planned Sometimes they have to wait for the right opportunity. Now, if his girlfriend had left, and there might be something behind that of prompting her to leave, not just because she became restless and wanted to go. There might have been something else there. I don't know. But uh, the timing worked out. So they were kind of like waiting to the right time. I did see that, or I heard that he smashed his laptop. That makes me think that he either received something or some type of news or some kind of maybe threat or some kind of information that just sent him off over the edge. And that feels like before he might have taken these drugs or what are substances. Um, yeah, it was before that. And then who, there's people in the room. There's at least three people in the room. 